back to Skippers today. I'm giving you eight must-add players for your fantasy baseball teams in week five. Again, Thursday, before the games, some of these stats will change, some of the roster percentages will change. But stick with me. Going to get this out for you. First player, we have Tommy Pham of the Cincinnati Reds. 35% rostered, 247 average, four homers, seven RBIs, 13 runs, and one stolen base. He's been on a tear recently. 12 for 30 with two homers over his last eight games. Also, he's only three seasons removed from a 21 homer, 25 stolen base season. He had 14 stolen bases last year. Tommy Pham is an elite contributor when you can get him going. The power and the speed is something you don't get a lot, especially on the wire this early. So you look at his percentile ranking so far, 98th percentile in average exit velo, 99th in hard hit percentage, 80th in expected weighted on base, 81st in expected slug, 80th in barrel percentage, and 84th in walk rate. The Reds are a horrible baseball team. We know that. But there's value in a player like Tommy Pham who's going to hit at the top of that lineup. He's going to get a ton of at-bats and a ton of opportunities to build up counting stats for you. Unique power, unique speed skill set. If we get 15 bags from Tommy Pham again and maybe 21, 22 um, home runs, that's a really solid option for a guy you can pick up off the wire here. Take Tommy Pham. Next, we have Rowdy Telez of the Milwaukee Brewers. 24% rostered. Yes, that is that is going to go up. 267 average, 7 homers, 21 RBIs, and a 337 OBP. I really wish he didn't hit two home runs last night because I had him on this list at the start of the week, and he was maybe 10% rostered at that time. Um, but still, most definitely a must-add player for me. He has made some pretty significant strides early on this season, paired with more consistent playing time. Um, he's in a really good spot moving forward. His zone contact percentage is the best of his career. His chase percentage is the lowest of his career. His launch angle is up five degrees from his career average, as well as a career high in barrel rate. He's also been fairly unlucky to this point with his expected batting average being 50 points higher than his actual average. Average exit velo, 84th percentile. Max exit velo, 97th percentile. Expected weighted on base average, 100th percentile. Expected batting average, 91st. Expected slug, 100th. And barrel percentage, 99th percentile. I'm really happy to see Rowdy Tillis succeed finally. As a Blue Jays fan, this is a disgusting trade seeing someone who where the Blue Jays could really use a left-handed bat as a DH right now. Um, but you should be happy for Rowdy Tillis, and you should be happy to add him to your fantasy team. Next, Yuan Duran of the Twins, 30% rostered. 0-0, 3 ERA, 1 save, 19 strikeouts, 0-83 whip. This is a pick where you trust talent. He was a top prospect in the twin system for a reason, but that was as a starting pitcher. His stuff plays incredibly well at the big league level. Picked up his first save of the season in his last outing. I think he could end up being the ninth inning guy moving forward. They talk about using kind of a platoon there in Minnesota for saves, and I don't think that's bad at all, but the ratios he's going to get you are going to be incredible. His fastball averages 100 miles per hour, and he throws a 96-mile-an-hour splitter. That has a 48% whiff rate. So he gives up some some hard contact. His hard hit percentage is ninth percentile, which is bad. But you look at everything else on his stat cast profile, and it's beautiful. 96th percentile expected weighted on base, 96th percentile expected ERA, 94th expected batting average, 92nd expected slug, uh, 97th whiff percentage, chase rate is 90th, and fastball velocity is 96th percentile. Who knows what happens to him this season? Who knows how they use him? But this is an elite arm with elite talent. And they're going to be able to throw him a lot in this bullpen or maybe even a starter at some point. But this guy's really talented and you need to pick him up. Next, Hassan Kim, infielder for the Padres, 32% roster, 259, three homers, 11 RBIs, one bag to start this season. And this has kind of been quiet hitting in the sixth hole for the Padres. A player that I want to pick up in Roto Leagues because he has the average, the power, as well as some stolen base contributions. He's been hitting six, and he still projects to play a lot until Fernando Tatis Jr. is going to come back. And that's not going to be anytime really soon. Kim has a weighted runs created plus of 159. The average is 100. That's really good. His strikeout percentage is down from last year, while his walk rate has doubled. He's only running a 286 batting average on balls in play. So we should see some of these numbers and these counting stats improve. Um, expected weight on base is 91st percentile. Expected slug is 89th percentile. Barrel percentage is 82nd. Walk rate is 82nd. Whiff percentage is 85th. And his sprint speed is 84th. So these are all nice tools for Hassan Kim to have. Um, and I think it's just a nice little stream if you need some help in your shortstop, middle infield roles. Pick him up. Next, I got a deep league guy, a guy who's only 3% rostered, Edward Olivares of the Royals. 364 average, no homers, two runs batted in, two stolen bases, 417 OBP. He's only played in 13 games, but he finally has a path to consistent playing time. He's hit lead off the past three games for the Royals, and we know he has a talent to be a solid major league contributor. 
how long we've waited for him to get an extended look in the majors. It's been way too much. The Mondesi torn ACL has finally opened the door for him at he's 26, right? He's a multifaceted skill set here. And it's been displayed on the minors over the past few years. At AAA last year, he hit 313 with 15 homers, 12 steals, and a 956 OPS in only 67 games. As a deeply guy, I think this is a really solid option. And, and you know, your 12 teamers, your 10 teamers as well. This is a guy you need to keep an eye on for sure. I picked him up last year in our 16 team roto, and it just sucked because he would contribute well and the Royals would set him down. I think the path to playing time is really going to help him right now. Keep an eye on him. Finally, I went with three prospects you kind of need to monitor for your teams. Maybe not so much must add, but to kind of throw it all into one video here. First one I have is MJ Melendez of the Royal 16% rostered. He finally got called up this week after Cam Gallagher went on the IL. Struggling a bit in AAA this year, going 13 for 78 with two homers and an OPS of 581. But in 2020, he had in 2021, sorry, he had an incredible season. He had 41 homers and had 103 RBIs. As long as he keeps getting significant playing time, which he played in every game he's been called up for, you need to look out for him in your fantasy leagues because, hey, He's got the catcher eligibility. He has the pop to do all the good things that you need from a catcher. And if he doesn't catch that much, you shouldn't really have to worry about the defense playing a factor in his offensive production. So MJ Melendez, a guy you need to keep your eye on. Next, Jose Miranda of the Twins, third baseman, 13% rostered. Another super talented corner infielder. He was called up earlier in the week by the Twins. And again, I was worried about playing time, something we need to worry about with these rookies. They showed how they want to use him, though. In the three games that he's been called up, Two times he's played first base and one time he's played third base. So he's played in every game, um, start, start, started in every game. He hit 344 last year across double A and triple A. And also hit 30 homers and drove in 94. Again, another super talented prospect that when these guys get hot, you kind of want to have your eye on them right away. You see a two or three games where you show their promise, and that's when you want to pick them up because everyone else in your league is going to be looking at them too. Finally, a guy who has not been called up yet, but I think it's a really solid stash is Max Meyer of the Marlins, 12% rostered. Scott White uh, from CBS wrote this yesterday. He goes, Max Meyer didn't do anything Wednesday, but Eliezer Hernandez did, allowing five earned runs in four innings against the lowly D-backs to raise his ERA to 666. The Miami Herald had already reported that the Marlins were considering making a change there specifically to clear spot for Max Meyer. Surely that switch is even more likely now. Meyer's the third pick in the 2020 draft and has been nearly perfect at AAA this year, even striking out of rehabbing Ronald Acuna twice in one game and actually was perfect in four innings this spring. He offers the sort of upside we're stashing ahead of time. Nothing but agreement for Scott White here. Meyer's a super talented righty out of Minnesota. He's a great arm. The Marlins have a plethora of good arms in that uh, deep organization. He's going to figure it out. He's super talented as a guy you want to get in front of, I think, because, hey, he comes up and he pitches like a stud that I think he is in his first game. People are going to be all over him. So this is one you need to get ahead of Max Meyer. That's all. Thank you for watching. Comment, subscribe. Let me know who you're trying to pick up this week, and we will see you next time.